Hi, I'm Ellen with artsyprettyplants.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a cement planter from a silicone mold and we're going to make that silicone mold. So when you're making a mold, the object that you use is going to make a big difference in how you do it and whether or not you're going to be successful. So for this tutorial, what you'll need to look for is a something that you want to replicate and that has sides that are straight up and don't necessarily curve around like like this one does. This is a it's doable to to make a mold like this, but for the tutorial we're, we're not going to do this because it's a few extra things that you have to know. But this this keeps it simple. Keep it straight. Even something like this will work. Um, it's got a slight flare, but that's fine. You just don't want it to flare downward. Up is okay, and and then not too much of a flare. So the other thing that you're gonna need to know is you're gonna want something that has sides that are at least this thick. This is really pushing it. Um, cement that's this, what you're seeing here is what you'll end up with. So your cement may crack if, if the sides are that thin. Um, so the way to get around that is by using an oil-based clay and building up the sides. And it's much easier than it sounds. You just roll it out and I'll show you in the, in the uh, tutorial and I'll show you how to, how to build this up. And the other thing that you're going to need to know is a little bit more about the silicone mix that you're using. One thing is how much you're going to need to use. You don't want to run out in the middle of a project because you can't add it afterwards. Umu 25, Umu 30, those are two different types that people often use. Smooth On is the one who makes this. They have a calculator on their website that you can figure out how much you'll need and whether or not this is going to be enough. Two of these bottles was more than enough for this. I did make this planter earlier. It would have been enough for this, but my container was a little bit too big and I didn't pack in the sides to fill in some of the gaps and I ran out, which was a little bit embarrassing. And I didn't use their calculator. It would have saved me a lot of money and, 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 a, and a little bit of time. The other thing is going to be the container that you pour the silicone mix into. You want a container that's going to fit this properly. And by properly, that means you don't want to have way too much space around it because you're just wasting silicone mix. But you want something that's going to be close to a quarter of an inch in extra space. And, and it can be more, just you, again, you don't really want to waste the mix. So if you can find a plastic container, that fits this, gives you a quarter of an inch around and a quarter of an inch to half an inch on top, then that will make things a lot more simple for this tutorial. I was not able to find something that was going to be suitable for this. Um, so plus, or I would have had to pack it out with a whole lot of clay, but I really wanted to show you how to make your own container for a silicone mold. And the way that we're going to do that is using this corrugated plastic. Corrugated plastic is perfect for this type of project. You can cut it, glue it, tape it, and it will hold your silicone. It's gonna need a little bit of clay to build up in the corners to help keep it from leaking, but it's, it's a cheap material and it's, and it's very easy to do. So I will show you how to do that. So that's it, so let's get started. I'll show you how to make your silicone mold for a cement planter and also if you find these videos helpful, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when a new video, when I have a new video coming out. First, start by measuring the object you'll be replicating. Then add a quarter to half an inch to that dimension and that will give you the sizes for each side. You're also going to want to add about a half an inch at the top. Make sure you're marking these with the grain. This will make it easier to score in the next step. So your lines will be vertical. Now go ahead and cut this piece out. Next, score the lines for the side but don't cut the full way through. Just trim through the front side. Then fold the sides at the score line. Now 
Next, make a base for the box and make it a bit oversized. Now cover the open corrugated spaces with tape so that silicone doesn't slip inside. You should also tape the corners both inside and out. Next, you'll add some clay and add it to the bottom to help secure the straw that we'll use for the drainage hole. Roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thick. Now trace the object you are replicating and trim it to fit. Press it down firmly into the bottom. It's not a big deal if it's not even since it will be covered once you add your plants. For this next step, you'll glue the base to the box's sides. You'll see here that I already inserted the straw into the clay. Don't do this yet, it'll just get in the way. Trace the bottom of the object so you know where to center it later. Now glue the sides to the base. You should glue it from the inside at first and then reinforce it on the outside. Use the clay to help prevent leaks. Just roll it in your hands and then press it firmly into the edges and corners. I didn't manage to get this on video, but you should test for leaks by pouring some water into the container once you believe you have it sealed. Now we're going to build up the sides of the replica. If you think your sides are thick enough, you can skip this step. First, roll out the clay to whatever thickness you need to add. Mine was about an eighth of an inch. Then trim it so that it's the circumference of the glass and the same height inside. Fit it inside and then start smoothing the clay with your fingers. You can add a little touch of oil to help smooth it. Now that the walls are smooth, you can go ahead and insert the straw. Just add a piece of clay to the top to keep the silicone from entering when you pour it in the mold. Now I'll lubricate the object. I used mineral oil, but you can use paste wax, Vaseline, or any type of spray oil. I should have applied more than I did here. Now glue the bottom of the object to the base so it's centered. This is where you marked it earlier. Now it's time to start mixing the silicone. Be sure to mix part A separately and also part B separately before you combine them.
Now you can combine part A and part B together. Be sure to mix it well. You'll know it's mixed when you no longer see two separate colors. You can see the swirls of the two colors here. Once thoroughly mixed, go ahead and pour in the silicone. It's best to pour it in at its lowest point, but my mold was small and it didn't have much room to work with. Once poured, shake and vibrate the mold to release the air bubbles. I did this for a couple of minutes. You'll let this cure for a minimum of an hour and 15 minutes. For my mold, it was closer to two hours before it had fully cured. Now it's time to demold. Use a box cutter or X-Acto knife and cut away the tape sides. At this point, it should easily pull apart. Pull off the clay and take out the straw. Even though I lubricated the object, it can still stick a bit. I definitely didn't use enough lubricant and therefore ended up needing some help. I had to have my husband push the glass out while I pulled. Now you can make your planter. For this, I added some flow control into the mix. This will allow the mixture to be thin without having to add too much water. This will make it less likely to crack. I added probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of the flow control to about two cups of water. Though you won't be actually using this much water, it's just the proportion that I knew. Go ahead and mix this in well. I usually don't use lubricants with cement, but I didn't want the planter to get stuck. Lubricants will cause tiny pinholes, which you'll see after I demold. It's up to you if you want to use a lubricant. Mix the cement to a smooth milkshake-like consistency. You want it to be pourable. I almost forgot to plug the drainage hole back up with the straw. Don't forget that part. Use something like a craft stick to help push the cement down into the mold. I like placing a board underneath to help me vibrate the mold and also to help transfer it when I'm done. Just gently tap the sides and shake and tap the board until you see air bubbles release. I did this for probably two to three minutes. If you have any excess, just scrape it off the top. After the cement has cured, which I'd say for this project was at least a couple of hours, you can remove it. Remove the straw and then start peeling back the silicone. This piece I was able to remove without help. Here are the tiny pinholes I mentioned earlier that came from using the lubricant. Clean up the bottom edges with a sanding sponge. I like my diamond grit ones. I used a 60 grit here. But you can use any sanding sponge, it just might take a bit longer. 